out. So there we go. Oh, Clint has paid. Oh, there we go. Clint hasn't been in DL for a long, long time. Hello. Hi. Hi, sorry, I just, um, I'm having to get set up. I'm presenting in the WCLN one in just a couple of moments. So I wanted to do a quick hello. It's been, I miss seeing in person. I know, me too. It's crazy. I did, it loses some of its effect when online, hey? It does. Yeah. And uh, um, I've had a, quite a few people asking why, why am I not doing more? But it's, it's just that, you know, I'm still trying to talk to as many people as I can, whether it's through Teams or Zoom or, um, um, oh goodness, there's been so many other ones that um, I'm on Skype, I'm on this. It just, so even though there's the sessions, I'm still trying to connect, but it's hard. It is hard. Yeah. Have you gone into that kudos play or? Yeah. Cosmos. Yeah. yeah. Uh, That's uh, kind uh, of fun, hey? It is. <laughs> Though I did find it was very amusing that, you know, my, my drink glass kept going down. So yeah. I think we've discovered the more you talk, the more your the drink seems to go faster. Ah, <laughs> well, it, I, I think it also depends on your mic, too, because a lot of times I was listening, but breathing and that also seemed to do uh, it. That makes sense. I've got a Yeti microphone, so it picks up everything. Mm hmm. Um, yeah. WCLN, what are you guys presenting about new courses? It's just, it's the, it's the development things going on right. right now. Yeah. I saw the email yesterday. There's lots of good things coming out. Yeah. So that's, that's, oh goodness. That starts in oh three minutes. Yeah. You better <laughs> run. Thanks for coming yeah. in and saying hi. Yeah. I hope it goes really well. And are you, this is being recorded. Yes, it is. I would love to come back and look at it later. I'm sorry. I can't be here live. No problem. See you later, Clint. Thanks for stopping by. Yep, bye. There's some of the people, Shayla, that go to these all the time. And Clint is one of the ones that I've seen there. I've been working in deal for so many years that you see him every year. So it's kind of neat. Yeah, I got to meet some of the kind of DL names last year when we started doing the course. So I met yeah. like Karen Fullo and Brent and things like that, but yeah. there's just so many people. There's so many people. Yeah. And it's so challenging because, you know, when I do get to work with teachers, it's often a couple. So it's, you know, right. we with three or four teachers right. um, over a period of time, but there's just so many good ideas and yeah. Yeah. And a lot of these people have seen it through a whole variety of time, right? Yeah. And I know there's a lot of curiosity about what the new ministry online learning policy is going to look like. I'm, I'm also very curious. Yeah. Um, I only yeah. know bits and pieces, but I think it's going to be really good. Good. I'm interested. I'm optimistic from what I've heard about it. I'm peripherally involved because of this course. Yes. Yes, exactly. It's on your radar now. I think the other session went right until 10 30 jenny so maybe yeah. we'll wait a couple of minutes after yeah. no i think that's totally fine Rhiannon, and i like how you put sides on the top corner it's nice to know where you're from just from visually there oh hi yeah i am Rhiannon from sides and Hello. yeah Graphic designer Andy, who I know he's had lots of shout outs, um, he put together these backgrounds for us. So we should use them. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Although uh, the one thing that drives me crazy about backgrounds, of course, is as you move around and if you don't mm -hmm. have green, it just, anyways. Yeah, <laughs> I know. You end up losing parts of your arms and your head. I always <laughs> talk there. this funny story of one time I was wearing this dark green shirt. And it actually green screened over most of me for an entire meeting. Um, so I'm very cautious of backgrounds, although I tend to use them. Yeah. Um, I'm very cautious of what I'm wearing. 
Yeah, and you try not to get decapitated like, yeah. through, while you're talking. You have to stay very still. <laughs> yes, precisely. No sudden movements. There's lots of people bumping in right now. So like you said, the last session must have just ended. Yes. Yeah, I had looked at attending the one before this. I was like, I'm going to write until 1030. That does not give me time to get to my room. No. Thank you for presenting you guys today. I look forward to hearing some ideas. Well, thanks for joining us. We're so glad to see so many great folks joining. You never know when you sign up to these what attendance will be like. So it's nice to see lots of friendly names and one friendly face. <laughs> What do you think, Shayla? Should we? It's ten thirty-one. Do we? Should we wait till what? Three, or four more? Three or four yeah, more? Yeah, let's wait a yeah. couple more. Sounds um, good. Like we've said, we've got lots of flexibility within what we have planned, and so exactly. I know it's been an action-packed morning. So I wouldn't blame folks if they needed to stretch their legs for a second. Yes. Hi, Melissa. Uh, Jenny, Melissa is one of the teachers who helped review the activity funds. Oh, that's Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Yeah. I think that's the only name I recognize so far. Hi. <laughs> Lovely to see you again. Yeah, you too. I thought, oh, this sounds interesting. <laughs> I'd like to see what's going on. Yeah, very relevant. Yeah, they're like this whole conference is great, but it's like the most crazy busy conference I think I've ever been to like clicking from one to the next one so fast. That's what we were saying. It's been an action packed morning, like going yeah. from one to the other. And, you know, in some ways it's great because when you're doing it online, you don't have to walk between rooms and, you know, do those sorts of things. But man, you gotta, you just gotta keep moving. Yeah. Yeah, Vicky's saying she was so tired last night. I'm not surprised. So much information. I stood up at 4.30 yesterday and went, oh my goodness. Like, I don't know how many times I've actually gotten out of this chair today. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's a good problem to have. It's interesting. Yeah, it's, it's also a funny problem to have, right? Like when you think of conferences, you think of how much you're running around and, you know, talking and all those things. And even a year later, I still find this to be such an interesting format. I love it because you get more attendees and more global, but it's just odd. <laughs> and I like the chats, but then I find we've got these chats and then the Padlets and I'm like trying to do both. And, but yeah, I mean, hey, if, if all our students were <laughs> engaged in doing both, that'd be awesome. So it's working, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Wow, we got 24 of us in here now. Yeah, let's maybe at 1035, we can maybe go, Jenny. Let's do that. Sounds Perfect. great. Because it's a lovely round number. All righty. We're ready to begin then, Sheila? Let's do it. Okay. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome 
to our session. I'm pleased to introduce Shayla Serchewski today to the 2021 BC Digital Learning Symposium. Shayla is from Open School BC, and she's going to be sharing with myself. I am a teacher in the province, an online teacher, uh, and we're, we're going to be sharing an online course that has been created on blended learning. So welcome, Shayla, and thank you for, for joining us today. Perfect. Thanks, Jenny, and thanks for the warm welcome and for co-presenting with me. It's always nice to have a friendly face alongside at these um, virtual conferences full of unknowns. Uh, so as Jenny said, um, we are here today to present to you guys on resources for educators coming from Open School BC. So the big focus will be on a blended learning course that we that was launched last year and is currently being redeveloped. Um, but also wanted to really gather some insights from all of you in terms of what is helpful in your professional learning um, path and what else could we be providing or using to enhance what we have going. Uh, so as Jenny mentioned, my name is Shayla. I do work for the Ministry of Education. I am part of a team called Open School BC. I'm an educational project manager. And so my background is in instructional design and also project management. And I do just want to take a moment to acknowledge that I'm calling in from the unceded territory of the Lekwungen speaking peoples. Uh, I am in Victoria, BC, and I'm also on, um, on this territory of the Esquimalt and Songhees First Nations. And, you know, in times of COVID, I am perpetually grateful for the ability to live, work, and play in such a beautiful area. Um, as we think about travel restrictions and our limited ability to kind of get outside our bubbles. Um, Jenny, I'll turn it over to you um, for a quick introduction. Thank you. So I'm Jenny Morrison. I've been working in online learning for most of my teaching career, so that's about 20 years now, uh, in various, various online schools in the province. And I was very fortunate to be able to become part of this project in which we were providing ideas and collaboratively, collaboratively working with teachers across the province and creating this blended learning on um, course. Um, I respectfully acknowledge that I'm in the unceded territory of the Shaquetnik Nation. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny. Uh, so just a quick overview of who is Open School BC. Um, I know a lot of people haven't heard of us and that's okay. So we are a team in the Ministry of Education. Um, we work on very project-based um, things. So we aren't as uh, procedural or um, upkeep as a lot of other elements of the Ministry of Education. So we don't do my ABC and things like that. What we do is develop resources for cost recovery basis within government. So for other ministries or public organizations. And then we also do things to support teachers. Um, so one of those is the course that we're talking about today. Um, and in a past life, we were kind of the DL champion. So we used to oversee a lot of the distributed learning. Um, especially thinking back to the days long ago where it was distributed learning was mailing um, some papers to a house and, you know, they'd mail them back. Um, that was open school. Uh, we recently celebrated our 100 year anniversary. Uh, what we look like has changed a little bit over time, but today we are a team of specialists. So we are educational project managers like myself, instructional design, project management, um, a lot of K-12 teachers. I, we have educational application teams. So they do the coding, the technical pieces, the things that I don't really understand. We have a production and media team. They make things look pretty and they make things functional. So we give them the ideas and they make magic happen. And we have a magical customer service and admin team. They help deal with marketing. They help deal with contracts. So overseeing things like working with Jenny and other pieces like that. And we at any point in time have about 25 to 30 projects that as an organization we're working on and so that's you know we're not well known but we do a lot of good things so i encourage you to kind of investigate us so the big thing we're here to talk about today is this course uh it is called blended learning creating a flexible classroom there is a link to the course on the uh conference schedule thing one of the things about this course is it was developed in response to the pandemic, but when we were developing it, we wanted it to be something that would live beyond COVID because we all hope that there is a time beyond COVID. And when we were developing it last summer, there was this uncertainty of what will September look like? Will we be in school? Will we be fully remote? Will we be bouncing back and forth? 
And so in a period of about six weeks, we developed this free online course, really emphasizing the theory, the practical pieces behind blended learning, and also giving some concrete strategies for teachers to take it to their classroom. Uh, Melissa has popped the link to the course in the chat. So if you are curious, uh, it is a free online course. It does require you to create a free account, um, but you can use any email, et cetera, to register for it. We are moving towards a new model of online learning in BC. So there is a session later this afternoon by Jennifer Riddell from the ministry. She'll be talking a bit more about that, but we're all on the same team. So I'm also a part of uh, her team. And part of this course is creating knowledge and awareness of what blended learning is and can be. In times of COVID, emergency response learning became very popular because that was where we had to go. Um, but what it's also done is created some fear around what blended learning might look like. And so this course really highlights what it is, what it isn't, um, and how you might use it. As mentioned, we did launch in August 2020. What you'll see now in the course is our first iteration. And so that's what launched in August. Um, it's been up there now for eight months, I suppose, but we are currently undergoing a significant revision. And so that's where Jenny and a bunch of other teachers came in over the last couple of months. We've actually spent a significant amount of time uh, rethinking what it is we put up there. So when we launched, it was, you know, we have to get this up now. School is coming. We need the resource. Then we had the opportunity to kind of take a step back and think, okay, what do teachers actually need? So a couple of things that we've been able to do are collaborate with BC teachers. So we did work with a couple last summer, but it was kind of quick. We had a few weeks. It was, what can we get done? So in the course, um, we have self-paced content. So there's, of course, no, there's no forced activities. There's no required timelines. You can jump around. You can access what you want. There's tons of resources for, uh, that you can use in lessons as lessons and for technology. So we've linked a ton of popular um, online resources. We currently have what we're calling scenarios, but we have, um, that's one of the big pieces we've been uh, renovating is the best word I can think of for the upcoming relaunch. So what we're replacing these scenarios with are in-depth activity plans, which Jenny will talk a little bit about soon, um, but just know that what you see there won't be there much longer. We also have a community of practice. Um, right now, the community of practice is a bit quiet, um, but we do encourage you guys to get in there if you're interested. Um, we'd love to see it be a place where people can collaborate, share resources, and talk about the challenges that you might be facing. We are currently building activities. Uh, so this will be a part of the relaunch to show technology in action. So different mind mapping tools, different ways you might leverage things like H5P and a learning management system, and ways to make learning go beyond um, exams online. Uh, Alicia, the community of practice is hosted in the LMS, so it is all within this one bubble. Um, so on the screen, you can see kind of a screenshot of the landing page. And so the community of practice is a series of, I believe it's four forums, five forums. Um, it's a number of forums, each on a different topic. There's some such as accessibility, there's resources and technology, there's indigenization and things like that. And, you know, we're keeping it very open and fluid. We have a light moderation in terms of making sure nothing overly offensive is taking place in there, um, but it really is just a place for teachers to collaborate. Um, it's in no means the ministry isn't watching over it. Um, it's just hosted in there. And then the last thing that will be coming soon is a number of video interviews. And so Jenny is actually one of the teachers we interviewed as well as Melissa, if she's still in here. Um, and these interviews are getting at the real experiences of what's happening with blended learning in BC. So talking about the challenges, talking about ways you've creatively engaged your classroom without having to physically be in person. Uh, the course as a whole, we've tried to keep not COVID specific, so one of the things, and I'll just jump to the next slide. One of the things we have throughout are what we've called our COVID boxes. So this is a screenshot from the course. Um, and we didn't want to completely ignore the fact that we are in a pandemic. Um, the pandemic is very real. Um, and it's something that a lot of us have been struggling with for the last year. And so throughout the course, we've made specific call-outs to things that are particularly relevant to the pandemic. Uh, so in the screenshot that you might see here, um, we reference education restart plan, but we've also talked about how mental health is a real challenge for students who have been thrown into 
um, working at, from home without really choosing to have that be their preferred way of learning. Um, and so you'll see those sorts of boxes throughout. Um, the content is under revision as well, but not significantly. Um, the one thing I will say is if you register in the course now, it will all stay in the same shell. So we're not going to relaunch it. And so if you do register today and share it with your friends, your colleagues, um, you'll get an email when we relaunch. The timeline is kind of late May, early June, um, dependent on video editing. That is kind of the big time piece right now. Uh, we have about 15 hours of teacher footage that we're working through. And so it takes a bit of time, but we're hopeful to have it up um, kind of early summer for a big launch in September. We have activities through the course. Um, please uh, don't try and read all of this right now. I know it's a lot of words on a PowerPoint slide, but just wanting to show you guys that there are opportunities to kind of check your learning, think about it, uh, challenge your beliefs, and they all come with what we're calling answers, but with the acknowledgement that there is not a lot of right answers in the things that we have in this course. It is a lot of, you know, how could you do this? Um, acknowledging there's 27 different ways. And then again, we have the resources. So we have three kind of key resource pages. Um, so one of them are teaching and learning technology tools. So these are things like mind maps, Camtasia, Animoto, those sorts of tools. We have the lesson planning one. So those are content type resources or learning games that your students might play with. And then we have some that are more learning management system focused. So kind of an overarching umbrella. Uh, on the right here, you can see one of our references to community of practice. So we have these throughout the course as well, where they make sense. Um, and this one is specifically saying, you know, go share resources, ask questions, tell people about the technology. And I'll turn it over to Jenny to talk about activity plans. Great. Thank you, Shayla. So activity plans is the portion that I was involved in on this project, along with Melissa, who we have joining us today. The purpose of these activity plans were it sort of it went off what Tony Bates was sharing with us this morning is that we wanted to take activities that go beyond taking a synchronous classroom environment and just putting it online, right? And during the pandemic, some of us, we sort of just did what we had to do. And that was that was what it kind of looked like for some of us even. Many of us obviously in this conference um, have work in blended and online learning. So we have a lot more experience with that. But there's always how do we make our blended learning opportunities or online learning oppor opportunities more engaging for our students. So that was sort of the purpose in what we were creating these activity plans. These are not lesson plans that take you step by step by step on how you're going to create a lesson, but it, it, it could help you in creating these lessons and how you can implement top technology well. Um, these activities there's suggestions here on how you can incorporate technology use into the classroom. Um, there's ideas on how to take these lessons and activities fully virtual if you want. How can you use assessment well in a blended learning environment? What sort of cross-curricular connections might you find in these environments? And uh, how can you extend these activities um, to be engaging for students? So um, you can see here, this is sort of a just a snapshot of one of the activity plans. There's been 24 activity plans created. They are not up yet as Shayla shared, but they will be up in the future. And they cover anything from uh, all the way from kindergarten to grade 12. So there's lessons in all your subject areas from social studies, science, math, English, even to career ed, PE, um, ADST. So you kind of see a nice variety of how you can implement technology into your, your online or your um, synchronous classroom. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think the one piece that Jenny did allude to a little bit is these were written by Jenny and another writer, um, but we sought out a lot of feedback from teachers. And so this is where that collaboration piece really came in. Um, we actually worked with a team of, I think it was 15 teachers in the end. I lost count somewhere along the way and they were all reviewed. So they gave us thoughts on, you know, how they would use it or what students would respond to it. And the other really neat thing about these activity plans, which I wish I had grabbed a screenshot of, is we have these things called design reflections. And so the design reflections are those thoughts you have when you're creating an activity plan or you're telling someone and it's how you might do things differently or how you might respond if you start the activity and students aren't responding well or ways you might extend it and take it one step further. So we've taken this as an opportunity to include all of those bits 
throughout these activity plans so that you can kind of see, if, especially if you're new to blended learning, you can see the thinking that went behind how we got here. Um, perfect. So we're going to move into a quick little breakout room activity. Um, so as I mentioned at the beginning, a big thing for open school is wanting to support teachers the best we can. Um, and so I am going to move everyone into breakout rooms and I'm going to give you just five minutes to just quickly kind of talk through these things. Um, and really the question is what makes a professional learning resource useful? So this could be from hands-on activities, this could be self-paced, any of those things. Um, only five minutes, it'll be quick. Um, just wanted to get you guys talking and not just listening to Jenny and I talk. Um, and then we're gonna come back, debrief quickly, and then we're gonna move into um, a bit of a longer activity for the rest of the session. Um, so I see a couple of people have left, so I'm just gonna recreate these rooms quickly. Assign automatically, okay. Perfect. So there's five minutes uh, to talk about what makes a professional learning resource useful. All right. And they're off. And they're off. I, uh, I saw Janet snuck in. <laughs> yeah, I saw that right at the end there. Um, and now she's in a breakout room, which she might not be overly thrilled about, but we'll find out. Um, I'm going to pop in and join room two because there's only four of them. You have, you've created four rooms. Okay. Yeah. You're going to do room two. I will go to four. Perfect. See you here soon. Okay. We'll just give it 22 seconds until yeah. everyone is back. <laughs> Everyone's popping back in. Oh, they're all back. Perfect. Amazing. So welcome back. Um, I had the opportunity to pop in and out of a couple of rooms. And so uh, Jenny and I are just going to open the floor, uh, see what you guys maybe talked about, see if there's any kind of really helpful tidbits that you guys want to share back. You're also going to use the chat, so uh, don't feel like you have to talk. I'll just jump in and say thank you for the opportunity to zip out and, and chat in a breakout room for a few minutes. It is a different flavor. I try to mix it into almost all of my virtual sessions with students and, and faculty. Um, and it was really constructive to hear there are some common standards and expectations for online resources that we'd like to see out there. But I also get a sense that there's um, it can be overwhelming, the just not just the tools, but also the processes and the best practices. So love that we're here refining that. I took notes in, in the room that I was involved in and there were some really great ideas that came out. So if my group doesn't mind, if I can just share a couple of those, please let me know if you do have a concern with that. Otherwise I'll just share some of them because they, they threw out some really good thoughts that um, I think is useful for consideration when, when if this course expands and for conversations to occur between, between people working in this field. Um, so people were saying that they really want practical and takeaways that they can bring with them. Um, I heard 
using rubrics, like having rubrics available that are easily editable. That's sort of an issue that a lot of blended learning teachers seem to face where they're out there, but you're recreating them all the time. So if you can edit something that already exists, that would be helpful. Having exemplars out there so you have some ideas of what you're looking. How do you make inquiry-based learning happen in a blended learning environment? Same with project-based learning. Like, how do you guide that the same way? Um, and uh, another um, suggestion was um, the assessment examples. Again, something that was easily ed editable that you could take little pieces of that were helpful for your practice. Um, and then one other comment from Melissa about the community of practice and how valuable it is to have a hub where people can actually um, have these conversations. So, Lovely. And yeah, you know, one thing that was mentioned in the room that I popped into that um, I hadn't even thought to mention earlier is, you know, the other ministry resource that is out there is Share IBC, and it is an invite um, only type of approach right now. Um, but I think most school districts have been um, invited at this point. I'm curious, is Janet still in here? Janet, Janet, uh, chime in the chat if you know anything different than that, because I'm not a positive. Oh, yeah, you can send a note to ShareEd um, to request an invitation, but they've been signing up school districts. But teachers can send a note directly to the ShareEd link to okay. request access. What Thanks, would we Janet. find in ShareEd? So ShareEd is um, a teacher-driven uh, community of resources. So. It is a, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe it. It's kind of like a library of lesson plans, activity plans and resources. And they also have professional learning resources. So this course, for example, is a link in ShareEd. Um, and the really cool thing about ShareEd, which is why I thought about it when you were talking, Jenny, is that most of them are just in Word documents that you can take, you can edit, um, and you can make your own. It's not this polished piece that you must take as it is. Good to know, thank you. Uh, Janet, could you stick the link to share it in the chat? Janet is my manager from Open School BC. Um, if anyone's curious, so I'm calling on this random person to share. Um, but yeah, that would be great. Thanks, Janet. Um, anything else that anyone wants to share? Perfect. Uh, so I will share my screen again because I realized that it has stopped when we did breakout rooms. Share. All right, so Jenny and I don't have much more for you, but we do have one more activity. So one of the things that we really wanted to push forward with this course is rethinking traditional learning. So blended learning doesn't have to be any specific formula. It's not, you know, we have flipped classrooms where it's okay, we watch the media online, we come to class, that's one option. Um, and I think that that's a common and popular option, but there's so many other ways to rethink learning. And so what we've actually done, um, and I will uh, pop the link in the chat if I can find it. I have so many tabs open at this point. Um, but what we've done is we've actually created um, six traditional lesson plan um, summaries. And so these are kind of one paragraph, things like, you know, you're going to do this task and then write this essay. You're going to do this task and write it, um, an assessment. And they're all designed to be in-person, teacher-directed activities. And so what we're going to ask you guys to do is we're going to actually break you into breakout rooms um, and have you think about how you would rethink these. Um, I'm looking at how many people we have. Okay, so what we're going to do I put the link in the chat and I see a whole bunch of people just joined already. You guys Amazing. are super great. So the breakout rooms are going to be a bit different this time because we're going to let you actually choose your room. Um, so the rooms are going to be based on which grade level. So we have a K to six room and we have a seven to 12 room. And so when we open the rooms, you will be able to pop in, you can open up the activities and we just encourage you guys to think about the questions we've posed. So what could this look like in a blended learning environment? Feel free to stretch that even further. How could this look online? What are the affordances and constraints of the new activity? So are there certain pitfalls that you could fall into or are there things that are just that much better? And the last piece is again, tying it back to that professional learning piece. What would help you feel more successful? Uh, one of the things we always say is don't try and take the same activity and put it online. And so think about that as well. It doesn't have to be the exact same. We just want to achieve the same outcome. 
Um, so I'm going to open up the rooms. Jenny and I will bring you guys back for a quick minute at the end, but this will be the majority of the rest of our time together. So it looks like I'm giving you 11 minutes. Um, and because I'm letting you guys pick your room, you will see the breakout rooms button at the bottom of your screen. Um, and you can click on that and choose which room you'd like to go to. I will stick around here for a second to make sure everyone can get into a room, but otherwise you guys are welcome to head off into your rooms. And if anyone is having trouble finding how to get into your room, just shoot me a message in the chat where you want to go. <laughs> There's a join button, I believe, that you select which room. Yeah. Did you put the timer on again, Sheila? He did, 11 minutes. That's fantastic. I don't see a join a join button. Uh, sure. Sandra, would you like to go to K to six or seven to 12? K to six. Perfect, I will send you there. Does anyone else need help getting into a room? I do see there's three people, but also totally okay if you're just breakout roomed it out. <laughs> perfect. Okay, Jenny, I'm going to hop into seven to 12. Okay, I'll go to K to six. We got four in each. Perfect.
muted. There comes everybody. All right. Well, that about does it for our time together. Um, just in the nick of time. I have put mine and Jenny's contact information up um, and I can also uh, upload these slides if it would be at all valuable. I'm not sure if there's too much in there, but I'll upload them anyways. Um, and you guys are welcome to reach out to either of us if you have questions, comments, anything that you would like to reach out to us about. Um, and I believe there's some sort of feedback thing, Jenny? I actually don't know that. Oh, I think there's a feedback oh, form. Oh, yeah, no, it'll come in through your email. It comes through your oh. sked. Sorry, it won't be up when we leave this meeting. It'll be it'll be emailed to you either tonight or tomorrow morning. Perfect. Uh, so please do fill that out. Uh, we go to lots of these things um, at Open School BC does. And so love to hear what you guys think. Um, it was lovely to chat with all of you. And I hope you guys got some helpful tidbits out of today's session. All right, I'm going to close this session. So thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, enjoy okay. the rest of the conference. Bye-bye. I think those two people. Yeah, I don't know if they're actually really here. But like yeah, at their computer. It. We did it. Good. That was great. That was smooth. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, no, thanks, Jenny. It was great collaborating with you. I love working with you. So. Yeah, it's fun. No, it was good. It went smoothly. And I think the time was about perfect. Yeah. yeah. I think we could have used a little more time at the end, but, you know, it was still really good. Our discussion was great and yours was good? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Really good people. All right. I, I got to run. We'll see you later and we'll talk Bye. to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Yeah. Bye.